Hi, I'm Bilal, head chef and owner of Mariam Restaurant in Timpoli. We create some of the finest dishes in Cheshire to keep our customers coming back time and time again. Many of my customers love my dishes so much that they ask me if it's possible to cook food close to Mariam standard in their own home. In this series of videos, I take on the challenge and cook some of my customers' favorite Mariam dishes in their own kitchens. Today, I am on my way to visit Susan and Kevin, two of my favorite regulars. Hello. Hello, Susan. Hi, Delaney, come. How's Kevin? He's fine, and we're really excited for this. You're looking forward to this? Definitely. I will take them through a process of cooking their own and the nation's favorite dish, the great chicken tikka masala. Hello everybody and welcome to Kevin and Susan's kitchen. Kevin and Susan is one of my favorite customers and asks me all the time how I can cook a chicken tikka masala, the nation's favorite curry in their own kitchen. And here I am today with Susan and Kevin. Thanks very much. Thank you. We're really looking forward to it. Absolutely. First of all, to make the chicken tikka masala, we need to make the chicken tikka first. Over here we have half a kg of diced chicken. After washing the chicken thoroughly, I will begin the marinating process. I am showing Kevin the perfect mix to make the chicken tikka masala for two. To serve more, just increase the measurements accordingly. To the diced chickens, we add one tablespoonful of Kashmiri masala, one tablespoonful of tandoori paste, one tablespoon full of tikka paste, two tablespoons full of honey, and two tablespoons full of garlic and ginger mix. So what's the mix? Which one? That one, it's got the ginger. How much ginger to garlic? Well, it's 50-50. It's oh, is that what it is? Yeah, right? side of your thumb, it's 50-50. Mixed with it's olive oil, is it? Oil? It's mixed with olive oil right. and blended. I add three tablespoons of natural yogurt and a teaspoon of garden mint sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the most important part, is the spices. To create the blend, I start by adding some garam masala, paprika, mm -hmm. and mixed powder. Is that called curry powder then? Well, curry powder, danya, garam masala, it's all mixed and you can actually buy this one, all mixed in a packet. And cold? So, it's called a mixed powder. All right, I've never seen that. We have mustard now. For English? English or French. But long as it's a, a tasty, strong mustard. Yeah. Gives you that zingy flavor. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't like using a lot of food coloring, but to get that vibrant color, mm. a little amount will do. Tiny amount of salt, not too much. I don't like using too much salt in food. If you want to add some later for yourself. That's um, mm. personal you preference. Do, yeah, personal preference. Some black pepper. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we'll give it a good mix now. We drizzle a little bit of olive oil. For that extra fresh kick, I sprinkle some fresh coriander and fresh mint leaves on top. We put this in the fridge for up to two hours. It will give you a much, much better flavor after it's been marinated. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this goes into the fridge. And now we can get on with making our sauce. To make the masala stock, I will use red peppers in brine, garden mint sauce, fresh garden mint, red onion, coconut milk and fresh coriander, plus some pure butter ghee cooking oil and garlic ginger mix. Now the chicken tikka masala, Kevin, is the most complex dish out of all of them. To cook this at home, it does take a bit of an effort. Now we marinated the chicken, 
there's a sauce to be made you have to make a stock as well and I'll show you step by step um, it is possible and it tastes twice as good as well I promise you so first we get a food processor these are whole red peppers in cans you can use the fresh one if you want but I prefer these ones it's a bit more sweeter so we use two of them use garden mint we've got some fresh garden mint as well try to use the red onion because this is a bit sweeter than lunch. the other mm. like Buna, Jalfrezi have a bit more sharpness to it these red onions have a bit more sweet flavour to it so it, this is the best one to use uh, for the masala so we're only going to need half of this make sure you chop it into nice little pieces that goes into it this is coconut milk Mm. So we put the coconut milk. Do you prefer coconut milk to blocks? The, the blocks you can get, can't you? You can buy the blocks, but this will be more purified and cook more Well, of course, quickly. you won't have to add water to it. No, no, you don't need to do this. This one goes straight into the sure, yeah. blender. Yeah. And it goes straight into a bit of herbs. Coriander is my favourite. Absolutely time. awesome. Now, we've given this a good blitz now. Kevin, after we process this, please make sure, whatever you do, if you're trying this at home next time, make sure it's fine mm. and runny as this. Do you want to take a smell of that? What do you think? Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Mm. It smells like your restaurant. Delicious. Now we have the stock ready, we will need a nice pan. We're using a wok today. What we don't want here is full heat. No. Right. We don't want no full heat at all because we're slowly processing the food mm. now. But this is what gives it the buttery flavour. It's pure butter ghee. I love this. A lot of people think it's bad for you, it's not. It's clarified. It's, pure. Yeah. it's clarified, it's absolutely beautiful, mm. smells gorgeous and when it's fried it's absolutely beautiful so we put reasonable amount say about two tablespoonfuls we use a little bit of olive oil tiny amount you can use vegetable oil if you want or any other oil i i love olive oil it's mm, good for you, use you. That all the time. It's, it's it's much much cleaner much better so why do you need the butter and the oil well you can do it just with the butter but if you're going to eat it next day as well, the butter ghee makes it more sort of like stiff. So you have to heat ah, it. Right. The so oil, it, keeps it. It, it will keep it all clarified and yes. runny moist. as well at the same time, moist. Yeah. Kevin, your favourite? My absolute favourite, yeah, absolutely. Ginger and garlic. Don't be shy, nice two spoonful of that. Now you've got to be careful not to burn, haven't you? No. I've read recipes. And Kevin, one thing I hate when people cook something, they go and answer the phone, they leave it, they don't take care of it. You must show love to the dish for it to love you. If you want to appreciate your dish, you have to show that same respect. Do not let go of the dish until it's completely finished. Yeah. You know, a lot of people go wrong there and then they say, oh, this is burnt or oh, that's because you've not been concentrating. Well, I've done that in the past, I've actually burned the garlic. Well, it's, it goes better, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't concentrate, you will you will not get it right. Now we're gonna add our stock that we made earlier on. Oh, that's lovely. It goes all in there. You see the colours coming out. Some final ingredients are added to the stock to complete the masala sauce. Again, two tablespoons full of yogurt. Two and a half. Mm -hmm. this amount. One tablespoonful of honey. It's a very sweet dish. Three spoonful of single cream. This is almond powder. 
This is what makes a chicken tikka masala, that nutty flavour. Use three spoonfuls. Put one more, that's four spoonfuls. Coconut powder. We use... Oh, it's powder. That's what that makes that Four spoonful of... I've seen the actual um, desiccated. Yeah. Powder, but powder, not too powder, okay. If, if you like it very sweet, you can put much sugar than you want. But if you don't want it sweet, then just minimize mm. the sugar. So I'm going to use about half of this. To create a rich red color, I also add a small amount of food coloring and some paprika. However, as I tell Kevin and Sue, this is optional. Can you see the color coming out now? Yeah. We'll let this cook now on slow heat. And I'm gonna add a bit of black pepper to it to give it a sharp zingy taste to it as well. A few of my favorite garden mint. And Kevin's favorite. Absolutely. You coriander. Yeah. Fresh coriander. So we give it another little stir. To help the sauce cook and reduce, I add around a pint of water. As the sauce is getting prepared, we will now cook the chicken that we marinated before. So, can you hear that? In the restaurant we usually use tandoori clay oven, but uh, you don't have to cook in a tandoori clay oven. You can make a chicken tikka masala at home using a griddle. Uh, using your pan but when you do marinate the chicken and you're cooking the chicken part make sure you do not overcook the chicken if it's not moist it's not going to taste good that's right this is the sauce we had earlier it's exactly the same sauce as coming out of this you can use it pour, pour it into the the masala sauce and that will give it a, a strong taste even more garlic mm. yes Definitely. Once sealed and char grilled on all sides, I add to the masala sauce to cook further. You know, I can, I can smell the honey as well. It's absolutely. Honey is the best sweetener you can get. It's good for you. It's delicious. It gives you that um, and rich it's, look. And it's natural. It's natural. Anything natural, if you get sweetener, it's, it's, a, it's a big bonus. Now, to get that authentic glaze, Right. Um, Kevin, that you get on top. What you use is a bit of this pure butter ghee. Just let it cook itself on top. Let it cook and look, can you see? I can see it now, yeah. Yeah, now that's sign of it getting ready. That's authentic. That's the authentic look that you get in the restaurant. Yeah. Yes. All these it's, trade it's secrets. Yeah. As this is getting cooked now, a lot of people have Ask me, cucumber writer. It's the most simplest thing. Sorry, you what, can what make. was that, Billy? A cucumber writer, you know, like yogurt. And okay. It's very, very, very simple to make. Honestly, it's very, very easy to make. And what what the Asian people used to use the writer for is, say, if you want spicy food, it's to cool it down. Right. To cool the curry down. I mean, you don't need to use it with a chicken tikka masala, but believe me, it's delicious with the chicken tikka masala on the side it's like a side dish a perfect accompaniment to any curry is my cucumber writer it's so simple but effective and all i will need is some natural yogurt a cucumber some mustard some honey some mustard seeds and coriander for the garnish so it's very simple what we need is half a cucumber chop it straight through the middle if it's a large size cucumber chop it in the middle again see so, get some nice pieces out there. So we've got the cucumber ready there. Now we're going to make the honey mustard yogurt. Half a tablespoonful is enough. One tablespoonful of natural honey. Yogurt. Bit of 
seasoning of black pepper. Give it a good stir. Pour it all over the cucumber. Use some mustard seed, some black pepper. And once again, Kevin's favorite. Absolutely. How simple was that? Simple. It was, actually, your curries are good, Kevin, but you know the accessories, oh, you can now do the yogurt like that. That's yeah. gonna be so much nicer. With the chicken tikka masala cooked and the cucumber writer prepared, all that is left now is to serve this delicious food to my host. I add a little seasoning, a dash of single cream, a sprinkle of coriander and some mint leaves to finish off the dish. I serve with my special basmati pillow rice and I will show you how you can make this pillow rice in my future videos. Well, there you have it guys, chicken tikka masala, cucumber raita cooked in your own kitchen. If you guys want to cook any dish at all that's your favourite, doesn't matter even if it's not in my menu, contact me at Mariam Restaurant and I will teach you step by step how to cook your favourite dish in your own kitchen. Mm, this is unbelievable, mm, beautiful, absolutely unbelievable to be cooked in this kitchen. Super. Well, Billy, thanks very much for that. I can't believe that this has been made in my own kitchen. Absolutely fantastic. Just like at your restaurant every Friday. Cheers. Good evening. Cheers, Billy. See you Friday. Thank you for watching my video. If you want me to visit your kitchen to cook your favourite Mariam dishes, getting in touch is so simple. Message me on our Facebook or come and visit at Mariam Kimberley.